So that's why I record during y'all's class because if it messes up, I got a couple more chemistry classes later that I can make it up on. Um, so today we're talking about ions. Ions have a charge. It's either going to be a positive or a negative charge. One thing that all atoms have, and you know this by looking at the periodic table, um, which, by the way, when we get done here and you start the assignment, go grab your periodic table. Um, every atom has a specific number of protons. Um, it's always going to have that number of protons or it's going to be a different atom. So carbon will always have six protons. And what charge is a proton? Positive. Protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral. They don't have any charge. And then electrons are going to be what? Negative. So no matter what atom you're talking about, you always know or should be able to figure out. Um, and you might have to do a little bit of work. So if they tell you the name of the atom, make sure I, they can see this. If they tell you the name of the atom, like carbon, you find the where it's at on the periodic table, and the atomic number will tell you how many protons it is. Um, if they have it set up in this format, the bottom number is protons, um, if they give that to you. If they give you the mass number, you might have to figure it out by subtracting or looking it up on the periodic table. There's all sorts of different ways to figure out the protons. But if you know the number of protons, you know how many positive charges they have, that's usually always going to be the same for a specific element. What can change is the number of electrons. Electrons are on the outside. They're in the clouds. You can share electrons. You can lose electrons. You can gain electrons. Um, there's all sorts of different numbers of electrons that can be on any single atom. And so how many electrons you have is what determines your charge. Um, now, we already said that electrons are negative. Um, if you have the same number of protons and electrons, they cancel each other out. So if my carbon atom that has six protons also has six electrons, it's going to have a neutral charge. It's not going to have any charge at all. The six positives and the six negatives cancel each other out, and there's no positives or negatives left over on top of that. So it's going to be neutrally charged. Um, if it's an ion, which they're asking you questions about ions today, it's an ion assignment, so you're probably not going to have any neutrally charged ones. Um, if it's an ion, you either have more protons or more electrons. Um, that's going to be what makes it an ion. If it has more protons, what charge is your ion going to be? Positive. positive, because protons are positive. I have more positive charges than negative charges. And so the number of protons I have more than electrons is going to give me my positive charge. So if I have six protons in that carbon atom, but only four electrons, I'm going to have a plus two charge because I have two extra protons more than that number of electrons. So that's going to be plus two. If I go the other way and I have six protons and eight electrons, I'm going to have a minus two charge because I have two extra electrons, which are negative charges. Um, so whichever you have more of and how many more you have determines what your charge is. So... Um, we have two different names here, cation and anion. Um, these describe whether you have a positive charge or a negative charge. The best way to remember this, cation has a T. And what does T look like, positive or negative? T looks like a plus sign. So the word that has a T in it is going to be for your positive ions. Cations are positively charged. Anions are negatively charged. Um, and so if you can remember that the T looks like a plus sign, Cat ion is positive, and the other word is anion. That's going to be your negative one. Uh, and they just basically at the bottom there said sum up your positives versus your negatives, whichever you have more of, that's what you have. Um, so find the sign of the charge by determining whether protons outnumber electrons and how many protons you have versus your electrons. Um, step two, find the magnitude of the charge by determining the difference between the number of protons and electrons. Uh, it's pretty simple. So here's an example. What is the charge of an ion that contains 53 protons and 54 electrons? What's the charge? Negative. negative one. You have one extra electron. The electrons are negative. It's going to be negative one. doesn't really matter how many you have total. It just matters how which one you have more of and how many more you have. So I have more electrons, which are negative. I have one more. So I'm going to have a negative one charge for this. Let's see if they have another example. Uh, they go through the steps. The steps are pretty simple. And that's it. So they don't give you any other examples. There's only eight questions. Um, I don't know. I haven't looked at it recently, so I don't know exactly how they phrase it. Um, but if you have any questions, please let me know. 
Um, remember, let me turn the light on and just show the people online. Uh, remember that it's the number of protons versus the number of electrons. Um, if they don't tell it to you straight out like they did in the example, you're going to have to figure out how many protons there are and how many electrons. And they might do the opposite. They might give you like an atom of carbon and tell you that it has a negative two charge. So you have to think, well, how many protons does carbon have? It has six. If I have a negative two charge, I'm going to have two more than that on my electrons. So I should have eight electrons and six protons to have a negative two charge. So remember, if you need a periodic table, I don't know really if you will need one, but if you need one, come get one. Uh, and if you have questions, let me know. I'll be over there to help you out. Uh, online people, if you have questions, please send me an email, and I will see you all tomorrow. Don't forget about the quiz afterwards. Do the ions first and then the quiz afterwards.